This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. And as early as 3 a.m., as summer temperatures soared past 115 degrees. To guard themselves from the fragile state of the abandoned mines, the rescuers wore long sleeve shirts, helmets, and protective gear. By the seventh week, hundreds of mines had been thoroughly searched and cleared from the lists, but there was no sign of Aaron. As the expansive and costly search stretched on, hope had begun to fade, and resources were dwindling. The San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department decided that this was it. Saturday, August 16th, would be the last day they would officially look for Aaron. We felt like we had one more shot at it, recalled San Bernardino County Sheriff's Detective Daniel Hank, one of the lead investigators on the case. The sun was still high in the sky at about 4.30 p.m. when Cherubini and his team headed to the very last location on their list, a 140-foot deep hole in the shadows of a sheer cliff. Approaching the pit, a glimmer of light caught the attention of one of the cavers on Cherubini's team. Near the collar of the mine, a spent brass bullet casing twinkled in the sunlight. The rescuer picked up the shell casing with a gloved hand and placed it in a plastic evidence bag. Kneeling beside the mine, Cherubini peered into the darkness. Then he reached for the radio on his belt. A few miles east, John Norman, coordinator for the rescue team, was clearing a different mine with his team, when Cherubini's voice crackled on the radio. We found something. We're at Site 108, Cherubini said. Could you come over and help set up the bucket cam? To expedite the search, Norman had created a device to record video from inside the mine using a one-gallon bucket a generic GoPro camera, a floodlight, and model airplane batteries he borrowed from a neighbor. Dubbed the Bucket Cam, the device could be dropped down the shaft and record footage of the bottom of a mine, making it much easier for the team to evaluate prospective open graves. At forty, Norman was lean with closely cropped dark blonde hair that contrasted with his tan complexion. Gathering their supplies, Norman and his crew piled into the truck. After a half hour of crawling over the rocky and sandy terrain, he and his two teammates arrived at the site, joining half a dozen rescuers and sheriff's deputies already huddled around the mine. At first glance, the mine appeared to be little more than an anonymous hole in the ground, no different from the dozens of other mines they had searched. But immediately... Norman was struck by the smell. The rescuers had inadvertently stirred up the air inside the mine, and a noxious scent was now billowing to the surface. It was awful. Everyone on the surface could smell this really bad decay sort of smell, Norman recalled. It was like gasoline and possibly some sort of human decomposition. The vertical chute sloped gradually to one side, making it impossible to simply lower the bucket cam from the mouth of the mine. Instead, someone would need to descend into the hole, pass the gradient dangle partway down the shaft, and lower the camera down to fish around the debris. Any volunteers? Norman asked, imploring the other searchers. Glancing to his left and right, Cherubini saw no other volunteers, so he stepped forward. I'll go down he said. I have a mask. A software engineer by day, Cherubini joined the rescue team in 2010 and spent weekends volunteering on cave rescue and recovery missions. An intrepid adventurer, Cherubini was typically the first to volunteer for a challenge. He retrieved from his backpack a face mask that covered his nose and mouth as the other cavers fashioned their equipment into an intricate repelling system. A large tripod was situated above the mine. The cavers weaved a climbing rope through the tripod, latching it onto a truck. The rigging would allow Cherubini to drop down the center of the mine and avoid touching the walls. Belaying the rope to his harness, Cherubini stepped backward into the hole, 
slowly descending into the darkness. A few feet underground, the air was dank and cooler. The clatters of crumbling rocks...